trigonometry. By definition, trigonometry is a branch of mathematics that shows the relations of the sides and angle of a triangle. Now, in your geometry class, we've dealt with a lot of triangles. We have uh, right triangle, scalene triangle, we have an acute triangle, and a lot more. Now, however, in geometry, we only measured right triangle, and we use the Pythagorean theorem to use the measure or to use to be able to measure the angles and the sides of a given triangle. Now, in trigonometry, we are not just limited to um, right triangles. Now, we can use other types of triangles, and we can measure its angle and its side length by using trigonometry. Now, angle, by definition, is basically two rays with same initial point. And I have three angles on the board right now. Now, the first example that I have is an angle formed in standard position. Now, in trigonometry, most of the angles that we're using will be in standard form or standard position. Now, what is an angle in standard position in trigonometry? In trigonometry, if the initial side is on the x-axis and the terminal side is moving around the xy plane, that is an angle in standard position. Now remember, an angle in standard position will always have the initial side on the x-axis. It's not going to be on the y-axis or in the negative x-axis. It's always going to be on the positive x-axis of your xy plane. Now the terminal side, on the other hand, this is the side or the ray that moves around the xy plane. So this one is the terminal side because by the definition, terminal side is the ending side, so that's where your angle ends. Now, there are two types of angles in trigonometry. We have positive and negative. Now, the positive angle and the negative angle is determined by how the terminal side is rotating around the xy plane. Now, if you'll notice, these two angles right here, or the pink ray that we have, they have the same position. However, their measurements are different. The positive angle has 230 degrees, and it's positive because the terminal side is rotating counterclockwise on your xy plane. So if your terminal side is turning to the left, the angle that is being formed by the terminal side is a positive angle. That's why this is measured 230 degrees angle, because logically, we're just approximating. But we know that this is 90 degrees, this is 180 degrees, and add a little bit more, and you'll have 230 degrees right between 180 and 270. Now, the negative angle, even if they have the same position, has a different measurement. This one is measured negative 150 degrees. Now, why is it negative 150 degrees? It's because the rotation of the terminal side is clockwise, and the angle formed by the rotation of your terminal side is negative. We know that from this side up to this side, it forms a 90 degree angle, but it's negative because you're rotating it to the right. And add a little bit more, and you'll have negative 150 degrees. Now, that's the two important um, aspects of angle formed in trigonometry. You need to visualize or you need to be able to visualize why you're seeing positive 230 degrees or positive 90 degrees or positive 72 degrees. And you, can, you should also learn how to visualize in your head how negative angles work or shows in the XY plane. Now there are two types of measurements in trigonometry. We use the degree measure, and we also use the radian measure. Now, we are all familiar with the degree measure because that's what we usually see whenever we're dealing with angles. We have 90 degrees, 25 degrees, 31.5 degrees, and those are examples of degree or measurement of angles in degree measure. Now, in trigonometry, we use a circle or a one-unit circle to determine the angles in trigonometry. Now, we know that the starting position of every angle will be at zero degrees. And if the terminal side is moving along the circle from zero degrees to this point of your circle, you have, you have formed a 90-degree angle. 
a 180 degree angle, a 270 degree angle, and a 360 degree angle, which is a full rotation or revolution of your terminal side from the initial side. So all these angles that you're seeing are in degree measure, and you're all familiar with this measurements from your previous lesson in geometry or in other math classes. Now, radian measure, it uses pi as a measurement for your angle. Now, in trigonometry, the value of pi is not limited to 3.14, which is basically the ratio of your di diameter to your um, circle. Now, pi in trigonometry is basically the measurement that we're using in an angle. Now, in trigonometry, this will still be zero degree. I mean, zero. You start at zero, and even if it's in radian measure, you still start at zero. Now, from zero to this side of your circle, it measures a pi. So from here to here, it measures a whole pi. So not the entire circle, circle, but the semicircle gives you one pi. Now, if this is pi measure, the measurement for the 90 degree angle in a radian measure will be, if this is pi, and you're getting half of it, it's half of pi. So this one will be your pi over 2. So in radian measure, it's no longer written as 90 degrees. We write it as pi over 2 or half of pi. So if this is half of pi, this is the whole pi, this one will be your 2 pi over 3. So in trigonometry, we're using pi as an angle measure. So examples of radian measure will be 2 pi, 5 pi over 3, or 2 pi over 7. And we're going to be able to have more um, radian measures as we move on to our lesson in trigonometry. So once again, there are two types of degrees or measurement that we're using in trigonometry, the degree measure and the ra radian measure. Now, how do you convert your measurement from degree to radian and radian to degree? So the basic skill that you need to acquire in learning trigonometry is understanding how to convert your measurement from degree to radian and radian to degree. So I have here two examples. On this side of the board will be your example on changing a degree measure to radian measure, and the other one will be from radian measure to degree measure. So let's start with getting a degree measure and changing it to radian measure. Now the rule is whenever you have a given degree and you want to change it into radian, all you have to do is to multiply your degree measure by pi over 180. So for example, we have 30 degrees and we want to change it into radian measure. Using the rule, multiply 30 degrees by pi over 180 degrees. So you're simply multiplying a whole number with a fraction. So if you multiply them together, you have 30 pi over 180. So now we don't have the degree measure anymore or the degree symbol because it canceled out. So now this is already a radian measure of your 30 degrees. However, we can still simplify fraction. So that's what I'm doing here. That's why I got pi over 6, because I know that I can divide the fraction by 10, divide the second fraction by 3, and I'll have pi over 6. So I have 30 degrees, which is equal to pi over 6 in radian measure. Now, how about conversion of radian to degree measure? If we have n pi, you can change it into n degrees by using this rule. So pi in trigonometry is equal to 180 degrees, so all you have to do is to substitute pi by 180. So if I have 2 pi over 3, multiply pi, or change pi to 180, and just simplify your fractions. So you have 2 times 180 degrees divided by 3, which gives you 360 degrees by multiplying the numerator. And since 360 degrees over 3 can still be simplified by dividing 360 by 3, your radian measure is now measured 120 degrees in degree measure. So we know that 2 pi over 3 is equal to 120 degrees if we convert it into degree measure.